Okay, so good morning everyone and welcome and thank you for joining us um, at the Center for Teaching Excellence for this webinar on creating a community of learners, connect, empower, engage. I'm Jennifer Yao and, and this is Aisha Haynes and we'll be facilitating this session today. I'm an instructional designer with the Center for Teaching Excellence and Aisha is the Assistant Director for the Center for Teaching Excellence. So in today's session, we're going to focus on a topic that's very relevant. Whether you're teaching face-to-face, -face, online, blended, or in a hybrid classroom environment, creating a community of learners is very important. We're going to start off today by outlining social learning theory, and then we will go ahead and define the term community of learners. We will highlight several areas where you can begin to help build and create your community of learners in your classroom, as well as identify some benefits and reasons why building a community of learners is important. And then we'll go ahead and finish by providing you with five takeaways to help really create that community of learners for your classes. When you think of learning, how do you see it happening? If you're like most people, they envision students sitting in a classroom, listening to a lecture, or maybe completing a test. Activities are usually designed for individual students. There's nothing wrong with this way of teaching and learning. It's been around for many years and it will continue. However, students are no longer these really empty vessels that need to be filled up with massive amounts of educational information very quickly. They have the internet with information at their fingertips 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And they often come into the classroom with lots of prior knowledge. They're social by nature and want to discuss their experiences with their fellow classmates. There have been many studies outlining the benefits of students learning through more social activities and social environments. This has led to many educators to adopt and utilize new learning theories. And one that we will touch on today is social learning theory. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about social learning theory, but the main point is that it considers how the environment and the social factors interact to influence learning. It really emphasizes the importance of students observing, modeling the behaviors, attitudes, and emotional reactions of others to really assist with their learning. From within social learning theory came this idea of developing a community of learners. Specifically, communities of learners that are immersed in social collaborating and learning environments. What comes to your mind when I say community of learners? Collaboration, self-motivation, engaging students, yeah, they're interacting with each other. Definitely group work. Yes, the challenges associated with this in the pandemic. Absolutely. Yes, and making those connections. Definitely. The words belonging, active, interdependence, social, maybe building on strengths, partnerships community interests, motivation, and, and going for those same goals. These are great ways of thinking about the term community of learners. And what you all have posted in the chat is excellent, definitely. So there are a lot of definitions of a community of learners, and you're welcome to find one that encompasses all the thoughts and feelings, but I think this one is very good. It's from 2013, Oscar Lenning, Denise Hill, Kevin Saunders, Alicia Sloan, and Andrea Stokes, and they all define it as intentionally developed community that exists to promote and maximize the individual and shared learning of its members. There is ongoing interaction, interplay, and collaboration among the community's members as they strive for specified common learning goals. I really like this definition because it really includes what you all have been saying in the chat. It includes the interaction, the shared learning, and the collaboration. One of the common threads that really ties all these terms together is socialization. 
And now that you have formulated your own ideas and heard the definition of a community of learners, where do you begin from here? So begin, building that community of learners in your classroom is intentional and requires you to plan your strategy in advance. Whether your class is face-to-face, -face, online, blended, or maybe in a hybrid format, students want to connect with you and their fellow classmates. Keeping this in mind, we'll focus on three strategic areas, and they include social, physical, and psychological. So social really, you want to offer the opportunities to make connections for your students. And this includes building a rapport and getting to know them. You know, students getting to know other students in the class, identifying similarities and discovering dif differences with a focus on maybe those common interests, recognizing diversity, expecting a growth mindset. You want to reduce anonymity. One method of reducing anonymity is learning students' names and helping them learn each other's names. Giving students the opportunity to represent themselves in a variety of ways is an excellent method and involve all students in, your, in their discussions. Some of the physical ways is like trying to create an atmosphere that values your students' contributions, enhances the learning experience, Consider how your students learn best. Try to have your courses scheduled in rooms, maybe with movable chairs or desks and tables that can move and allow that flexibility to, to produce those arrangements and for those group activities. Um, maybe subdivide the larger classes into smaller groups. Uh, use assessments or diagnostic testing, maybe to determine your student's background in the course topic. Um, invite more experienced students to be available to offer advice and support to maybe those less experienced students. For the psychological, be enthusiastic and passionate about your content. Build the trust in your, with your students. Model empathy, kindness, and compassion. Welcome mistakes as part of the learning process. Expect a growth mindset. Be inclusive, ask yourself who is being left out and as a result of this teaching approach. Celebrate community, gap, maybe with a gallery of achievement. I've seen many um, professors use Padlet or discussion forums and really post everybody's ideas and, and really get people to work together to, to um, go on those discussion forums or Padlets. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Aisha now, and uh, she's going to talk about the types of class interactions. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, before I begin, I would like to share that I am a person who stutters. So that just means that it may take you a little bit longer to hear all of my brilliant ideas about creating a community of, of learners. So within the social, physical, and psychological focus areas, there are three types of interactions that should be planned for. And they include student to instructor, student to student, and student to content and interactions. So I'll talk more in depth about each area now. The first interaction is student to instructor. Uh, there are several strategies for student to instructor interactions that help build com community. And these strategies include including a welcome message for our students through Blackboard. This can be done by using the announcements feature. When we create an announcement, we can also send the announcement as an email. And this is helpful no, no matter our course delivery method, whether it's face-to-face, -face, whether it's blended, or whether it's on, online. We can also consider having students introduce themselves. If you have a large face-to-face -face course, this may be difficult to do in person. You can consider using the Blackboard discussion board feature for student introductions, even if you teach a face-to-face -face course, whether the course is large or small. Of course, this strategy can be used in an online class. 
if, if your course is small, you can consider responding to each introduction. If your course is large, you can summarize the in introductions and discuss common information or div differences. Consider including a frequently asked question section of Blackboard where students can ask course related questions. Our response to one student can be seen by other students and can assist us with not having to answer the same question more than one time. Blackboard has a built in web, web conferencing tool called Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. If you teach an asynchronous online course where there is no meeting time, you can use Collaborate to welcome students to, to the course and start the semester with a real time interactive com component. Having office hours is very important. If you teach face-to-face, -face, you can have face-to-face -face or virtual off or virtual off office hours. If you teach online, you can have virtual office hours by using Blackboard, co co Blackboard Collaborate. And remember that Blackboard co Collaborate is already built into Blackboard. You'll want to provide regular and timely feedback to your students. Letting students know in advance in your syllabus or other communication channels how long it will take you to provide feedback to them is important. So this can be three days, one week, or whatever time frame works for you. We can consider interacting with students as they work on course assignments in, in class. In a face-to-face -face class, we can walk around the room, we can check on the students, we can ask them if they need assistance and answer questions. And we can also interact with students virtually. The second interaction is student to, to student. Several strategies for student to student interactions that help build community include providing an opportunity for student, for student introductions. Students can introduce themselves in small groups and report information about others to the entire class. Consider having questions that students ask other students to get to know each other better. We can also facilitate icebreaker ac activities. So a few icebreaker activities are two truths and a lie, where students tell two unique characteristics about themselves that are true and one that is a lie. The class can guess the, the lie, and this can also be done in an online course and a blog or discussion board. How about the snowball activity, where students can write three things about themselves on a piece of paper. They can crumble up the paper to resemble a snowball and then have a snowball fight. Each person can grab a snowball and find the person who wrote it. Once the person who wrote the information on the piece of paper is found, they can bring the person to the front of the room introduce them and explain what they learned about the person after reading the information on the, the paper. Encouraging reflective discussions. This allows students to think and talk about course topics. How about a think pair share activity? Students think about a topic, pair up with someone else to discuss the, the topic, and then one person from the pair shares the information discussed with the class. How about us planning group activities, class debates, and providing opportunities for interactive peer feedback? Think about how these activities can help build a community, build community in your course. The third interaction is student to content. Several strategies for student to content interactions that help build community include interactive lectures with student polling and feedback discussions. If you teach synchronously online, you can use the polling feature that is built into Blackboard Coll Collaborate. If you teach in person, how about using the game based tool called Kahoot or iClickers, Poll Everywhere, Google Forms, 
or even an online whiteboarding tool that Jennifer mentioned earlier called Padlet. Of course, no matter your delivery method, you can include course content and Blackboard for students to access or provide course content in class or e even both. If you teach online, how about creating short videos or audio introductions for each module? In whatever content that we provide to our students, we want to include accessible content for students with and without disabilities. This includes captioning videos and audio files. If, if you teach online, the Office of Distributed Learning can caption videos for you. Uh, we also want to create accessible documents and presentations if they are posted online. And if you have questions about making documents accessible, then let us know. What interactions will you or can you include in your course to help create a community of learners? Debates, discussions, group ac activities, extracurricular activities, using student questions, writing as a framework for the class this discussion. There are several benefits for creating a communities in creating a community of learners in your course. And these include students feeling connected to other students and the instructor. An increase in student motivation. Students strengthening relationships with each other. It helps to build trust between students and the instructor. And you can create a more inclusive learning environment. Some additional benefits include students feeling included in the course, students learning from the perspectives of other students from different backgrounds, increases students' sense of belonging, can deepen student learning and increases the critical thinking skills of students. And the list can continues. So what other benefits can you think of that I missed? Networking, yes. All right, so we've discussed various ways for us to create a community of learners in our courses. I'll leave you with five to wrap things up. Establish your presence in a positive way. Make announcements to help build a strong rapport with learners. Urge your learners to ask questions. Create group assignments and ignite dis discussions. Creating a community of learners is essential in each and every course. Let us connect, let us empower, and let us engage. What questions do you have for us? All right, Kelly has mentioned that uh, she likes to include activities into her classes, but she's a little worried about COVID and having student discussions within close court within close quarters. Does anyone have uh, sim similar uh, worries as Kelly? All right, so while that's coming through, uh, Derek, how outspoken, not outspoken, do you expect incoming students to be in, di di in discussions? Um, that's a great question. Um, I would like for others to, to uh, chime in as well if able to, um, but I, I expect students to be as they have been in the past regarding um, being outspoken in discussions. Um, I, I don't, I'm not sure if there will be a difference between the incoming students versus students that we've had in the past who have uh, been at the university. Um, Mitchell mentions, I have often, I, I often have included activities that require students to move around the room, but that's not that, but that does not seem safe. And then Kelly has mentioned, for instance, using marbles to show ecological concepts, which means students are touching the same object. 
They typically are more reserved, but I think Think Pair Share helps with that. They can discuss with their group before speaking out loud, and that is related to Derek's quest question. Yes, and this is Jennifer here. I, I would go back to Derek's question too, and I would say it also really um, depends upon the type of questions that you're going to get your students to be discussion, discussing. I mean, I would think that if you can maybe come up with a list of questions for those students that really um, are more personal in nature, meaning that, you know, maybe relates really well to what they um, are going to be doing or what they've done, um, they've seen in other courses or, you know, to be able to make them feel a little bit more comfortable to be a bit more spoken in, in those discussions. Maybe not just yes or no questions, um, maybe come up with some ones that, and, and those, when we go back to what we were talking about with the icebreakers and it kind of helps with, you know, getting students to be more familiar with other students in the course and, and you know, feeling that comfort level. So I think that kind of goes back to that, but yeah, it's a good question. You can also, even if you teach a face-to-face a -face class, you can also have online discussions as, as well. Um, I know that um, a Madeline, Madeline, Madeline mentioned that some students um, may not be com comfortable talking out loud or may feel comfortable typing. So she's included, so they have included some synchronous course sessions there but you can also utilize the black the the discussion boards and, and blackboard to, to have conversations after class or before your uh, classes can as well so just because the, the class is face to face that does not mean that you can't also have discussions via the discussion board or blog feature in blackboard all right, if not, we would like to thank you for attending this session, creating a community of learners, connect, empower, and engage. Uh, we hope that you all have a great semester. If you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us at the CTE. We look forward to assisting you in any way that you need uh, regarding, your regarding your teaching. So thank you once again, and have a great rest of your day. Have a great day, guys. Thanks.